The first oil tanker was launched by the British in the latter part of the 19th century, and it fueled a revolution in transportation. These enormous ships now dominate the world's oceans. They move millions of tons of oil daily, and without them, most of the world's economies would be powerless. The life-size version of this tanker ship will be bigger than two football fields. It's so big that they build it in sections called grand blocks, which they assemble by crane in a dry dock. The process takes plenty of planning and engineering. They map out the job on a computer and assign a number to each of the 110,000 parts. In a big job like this, computer-coordinated labeling is the only way to go. They weld steel sheets to build the ship's hull. Sand placed on the seam melts during the welding to shield the seam from any contaminants in the air. Workers ready the structural steel beams. A robot places them at just the right spot on the welded section of the hull. Then an operator verifies that the placement is correct. More robots weld the beams to the hull section. Next, they submerge a steel plate in water. The water suppresses the noise and smoke from a plasma cutter as it carves holes in the steel. This steel plate will be part of the ballast tank. Some of the holes will allow water to flow through, while others lighten up the steel structure. The superheated plasma also cuts slits to interlock with the structural beams on the hull part. They then weld the assembly and install a top plate for a double-layered hull. Double hulls provide extra protection against oil spillage. After a paint job, powerful machinery transfers the double hull grand block to its final position on the side of the tanker. When fully assembled, the hull will have 12 cargo tanks with a total capacity of 14 million gallons. The engine section is situated at the stern of the tanker. It will take three diesel generators to power the ship's lighting, ventilation, and computer systems. They carefully lower each one onto the deck of the ship. A 10,000 horsepower diesel engine will be the tanker's driving force. Installing it is a very precise business. It has to be in just the right position to turn the massive propeller. Four months later, the hull is complete and the massive propeller is in position. It's all hands on deck to build the deck house, where crew will live for months at a time. There will be an incredible 10 miles of piping on this ship. Here, workers weld and bolt them to the deck brand blocks. It's an elaborate maze with an impressive master plan. They connect these pipes to the series of tanks in the hull so they can be used to load and unload cargo. Meanwhile, inside the hull, those cargo tanks are coming together. On the very bottom, the crew builds a network of heating coils. They'll be used to heat crude oil to a more fluid form so it can be pumped out of the tanks. Other workers grind welded seams on the ship's outer skin. This evens the surface for painting. The paint is an epoxy blend that resists corrosion in salt water. They apply it in three or four layers and measure its thickness with a special ultrasonic gauge. In total, they spray more than 38,000 gallons of paint on this tanker. In this time-lapse video, our tanker comes together like toy building blocks in a matter of seconds. But as you've just learned, this is a complex job. It actually takes 16 months. A couple more months of testing, and this tanker should be good for the long haul.